This is Professor Corey from the Professor's Do Voice, and this video is a mini lecture that covers material from our third lecture on advanced acid base equilibria. In this lecture, we will explore buffer systems and pH in detail, followed by procedures that can be used to make a buffer. The Henderson Hasselbach equation is simply a rearrangement of our equilibrium expression for the hydrolysis of a weak acid or base. The rearrangement allows us to calculate pH given the pKa and equilibrium concentrations of our conjugate pair. Since the volume is the same for the conjugate pair, given they're in the same equilibrium, they will cancel out in the equation. For this reason, we can use moles or molarity. Realize also that diluting our buffer system will have no change on the pH, again because the volume will be the same and it'll cancel out. Let's apply the equation to a word problem. What I like to do is find the weak acid or base and write the hydrolysis reaction. In this particular question, I recognized NH3 is a weak base. So I write the hydrolysis reaction and see that the conjugate acid is NH4 plus. A salt of this conjugate acid is ammonium chloride. When placed in water, the salt will dissociate, yielding 0.020 moles of both the ammonium ion and the chloride ion. The chloride ion is not part of our buffer system, and it's also a neutral ion, so it'll have no effect on the pH. Solving for pH, we get 9.25, or answer number 2. Notice that the weak base and conjugate acid are in equal molar amounts. The division equals 1, and the log of 1 is 0. So the pH is simply equal to the pKa, and this is a very important observation. When asked to find the pH change, we'll need to find a final pH and an initial pH. Let's start with the initial pH before any sodium hydroxide is added. Using the Henderson-Hasselbach equation and the pKa for the ammonium ion, NH4+, we determine the pH of the buffer system is 9.22 prior to adding the strong base. Next, we need to know what the base will react with. Bases react with acids. The acid in our buffer system is the ammonium ion, NH4+. This reaction with base produces ammonia, NH3, and water. This is written as a net ionic equation, and the sodium ion is a spectator. It is a neutral ion, and it will have no effect on the pH. We will now add our sodium hydroxide. Since the volume is changing, our molarity values are no longer accurate. So we will calculate the number of moles of everything as shown here. The reaction that occurs when the base is added is shown at the bottom. We will create a stoichiometry table or a mole table to determine our final quantities. Since we're adding a strong base, this reaction will go to completion, or in other words, this reaction is going to proceed until either the base is gone or the acid is gone. Since we have far more acid than the amount of base added, the base will run out. So we can subtract 0.004 from the OH minus, leaving us with no base. This base did consume 0.004 moles of our ammonium ion, which produced 0.004 moles of ammonia. We can put these new values into our equation and solve for the pH. The change is represented as final pH minus the initial pH and is equal to 0.25. Try this one on your own. Pause the video and I'll give a detailed explanation on the next slide. The buffer system is the weak acid. It's HC2H3O2. This is acetic acid. And the salt of the conjugate base is sodium acetate. This question doesn't ask for a pH change, but I'm going to calculate an initial pH before any acid is added using the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. Now that the initial pH is known, I'll ask myself, what is the HBr going to react with? HBr is a strong acid, so it'll react with the base, which is the acetate ion. I can write a mole table and solve for the new values after all of the HBr has been consumed. Using these values, I can calculate the new pH. Practice makes perfect, so pause the video. Give this one a try. The pH before adding any base is calculated using the Hasselbach equation. Notice that we have equal amounts 
of our weak acid and conjugate base, so the pH will be equal to the pKa for acetic acid. A mole table is needed to find the new amounts after the sodium hydroxide has been consumed. These new values will be used in the equation to solve for the new pH. I want to emphasize here that the pH did not change much. This is because the base was added to a buffer system. If I were to add the same amount of base to just plain water, which is not a buffer system, my pH would be 12. So the same amount of base added to water has a much larger change in pH. When making buffers, it's important to know the approximate pH range that you want. The pKa of the acid in your buffer system, this is either the weak acid with its conjugate base, or it could be the conjugate acid of a weak base, must be within plus or minus one of the desired pH. We can use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation and solve for the ratio of base to acid. Typically, buffers are made in concentrations ranging from 0.1 to 1 molar. I need to find a weak acid or a conjugate acid of a weak base that has a pKa close to 3.50. I'm going to use nitrous acid, HNO2, because the Ka is 4.5 times 10 to the negative 4. The negative log of the Ka gives us our pKa, which is 3.35, and this is plus or minus 1 away from the desired pH. You could use other buffer systems. This is simply one possible system that has a pKa in the desired range. Next, I will solve for the ratio of base to acid, and these are the amounts in moles that I can add to one liter to produce the buffer. Notice how the ratio is 1.41, which can be written as 1.41 over 1, and these are the relative amounts of the base and the acid. I can even make this, a, make this ratio into a factor if I need to. So this is very similar to the previous question, except this question tells us the concentration of the acid desired at 0 0.10 molar. So here, I'll use that ratio of base to acid as a factor, and I can solve for the amount of base needed, 0 0.141 molar. In closing, I'll briefly talk about another method of creating a buffer. HF is a weak acid. If I add a strong base, I will produce the conjugate base of the weak acid. If there are sufficient amounts of both present, we will have a buffer system. We could also create a buffer by adding an amount of strong acid to a weak base. In this lecture, we introduced the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, which can be used to calculate the pH of buffer systems. This equation can also be useful to determine the relative amounts of conjugate pairs needed to produce a buffer at a desired pH. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for our next lecture where we will explore how a common ion can affect the pH.